Hello friends, welcome to lecture number 6 of electricity and magnetism. I have already made 5 videos, uh, 5 lectures. Links are in the description box. So, this is another application of Gauss law here. We are going to discuss electric field intensity due to uh, uniformly charged long hollow cylinder. Right. So, please subscribe the channel if you are new to my channel and also share with your friends and also hit the bell icon so that you get notified when next uh, lecture will be uploaded right so inspire me to create new videos for you just leave comments do you like my videos or not okay let me know please so now let's start suppose we have a infinitely long cylinder suppose this is a positively charged uh, infinitely long cylinder uniformly uh, charges are uniformly distributed over its surface like this right let me consider that way and this is the axis of this cylinder suppose and its radius is suppose capital r this radius is capital r right and we are to calculate the electric field at a point p suppose here is the point p at this point here is the point p at this point we are to calculate the electric field due to this infinitely long cylinder right so in order to do that let me draw a gaussian surface through this point p right through this point p this is the gaussian surface suppose cylindrical gaussian surface through this point p right and it is at a distance of small r from the axis of the uh, from, uh, from the axis of the hollow cylinder right so and this is the height of the gaussian surface right and so obviously the electric field due to this positively charged hollow cylinder that will be radially outward in this direction right radially outward in this direction this is the direction of vector as a electric field right this is the direction of electric field and here we're going to get uh, three kind of surfaces first one this is the first surface which is the top surface is the first surface let me consider that way and the area vector will be in this direction right and for the bottom surface let me take this as second uh, sorry third surface and second surface is the suppose the curved surface this is the second surface so for the top and bottom surface this will be the area vector in both cases area vector is perpendicular to the electric field for for top and bottom surface right and in this vector in this uh, for the second surface number two so here is the electric field e vector and in the same direction along the same direction we have area vector as well ds right let me write ds area vector along the same direction so here is the suppose uh, a very small element uh, area element ds let me assume that way so now you see mm, let me write what i have considered here so these are things that we have assumed uh, let me write here so here you see uh, lambda is the linear charge density and capital r is the radius of the cylinder small r is the radius uh, distance between the point p this is the point p here you see this is the point p from the axis of the cylinder or you can say radius of the gaussian surface or you can say radius of the gaussian surface and h is the height of the gaussian surface right so now you see uh, let me write the uh, draw, uh, copy this diagram and let me go to the next slide okay. let me go to the next slide here is the next slide so you see as we have considered lambda is the linear charge density okay charge per unit length okay charge per length you can say right so therefore 
charge will be equal to lambda into length right so now you see what will be the charge enclosed by this gaussian surface the charge enclosed by this gaussian surface Gaussian surface let us suppose it be Q if Q amount of charge is suppose distributed over this length so this this height this height is uh, small is we have considered then that will be given by lambda into small h right we will get that now according to Gauss law according to Gauss law electric flux e vector dot ds vector that will be 1 by epsilon not times of q that means q by epsilon not you can consider that way right so here as i have already told you that we have got three surfaces first one is this the top surface and the second one is the curve surface right and the curve surface and the third one is the bottom surface right this is the third one so we can write this like this way for the first surface eds and dot product of e vector and ds vector can be written as eds cos so here for the first surface the area vector is in this direction and this is the electric field vector so angle between them is 90 so we can write here cos 90 and for the second surface surface number two eds uh, here you see electric field is also in this direction as well as area vector so we can write cos 0 degree then for the third surface surface number 3 eds again cos 90 degree right so this is the area vector for the third surface and this is the electric field right so angle between them is 90 again q by epsilon naught right so here you see cos 90 is 0 so this time this term gonna be 0 and this term also gonna be 0 and cos 0 is 1 so we get second surface only and this e can be written outside the integral e integration over the second surface ds is equal to and q can be replaced by this value that is uh, let me write this one as equation number one let me give it equation number one so uh, you can replace it by lambda h by epsilon naught so here using using equation number one so we have got this now let me go to the next slide so here you see if you integrate ds over the second surface if you find the area of the second surface of the gaussian surface right that is the curved surface so its radius is smaller height is smallest so we're gonna get 2 pi small r into h right that is the curved surface area of a cylinder so right lambda small h by epsilon naught so here you can see small h small is gone so we have e is equal to lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught r so we're gonna get this result right this is what this is nothing but this is electric field at p due to a uniformly charged uniformly charged hollow long hollow cylinder so 
so in this case here you see p is lying outside the cylinder this hollow cylinder and p is lying outside right here that means capital r is greater than sorry small r is greater than capital r so what if so here let me write when p is outside the cylinder right so what if if p is on the surface of the cylinder that is if small r is equal to capital r then what we should have got then e should be equal to lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught this small r will be replaced by capital r that means this is the infinitely long positively charged cylinder if we take the point p here right on the surface then we will get this result right and if what if p is inside the uh, cylinder so what if if uh, p this point p is inside the cylinder this is the axis of the cylinder suppose this is the distance is small r and radius of the cylinder is capital r then the gaussian surface should be assumed this way so now you see charge enclosed by this gaussian surface is zero here charge is zero because these charges are distributed over the surface only right so that's why if p is inside the hollow cylinder cylinder that is small r is less than capital r then charge enclosed by the gaussian surface that is uh, q then electric flux then electric flux that will be again zero by epsilon naught by gauss law right then phi means electric flux means e again integration ds so here we're gonna take the second surface it doesn't matter which surface you take it gonna be equal to zero right e will be equal to zero if we lie inside the surface right so hope you have understood this topic then if you have understood this topic please uh, share with your friends and hit the like button and also hit the bell icon so that you get notified when new video will be uploaded thank you for watching see you in the next video